Hi, I was asked to make a little recording of just using the Bible Hub app, which I usually use on my phone or tablet, but I am going to use it on the web browser on my computer because it's easier to share screen from Zoom. And I am also assuming a lot of you would want to use it that way, and it can be used any of the ways I might use my phone at the end. So I thought just for an example, we would look at Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. And in NASB, that says, Yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. I do recommend reading a few verses above that. It all makes more sense and it's really encouraging. So I'm going to share screen. And I just have a web browser open. If I start right from the beginning, I'll pull open another one. And I just type in biblehub.com. You could also just search for Bible Hub, but usually type in biblehub.com. There's so much on here and you can just use it as a Bible app. You can look just in different concordances, but I find it easiest just to go to the top here and type in what I want, or it's a drop down menu. You can use the search bar and type for certain key parts, but I just like to go right to the verse that I'm looking for because often I just either feel like I'm not understanding a verse and I just wanna make sure I'm getting all the meaning. And so I just wanna look up either one word or a bunch of words in a single verse or more. So I start with, the book Isaiah. So just in that drop down, I've gone to the book. They have all of them listed in the order. So I think I've gone off a bit now. So I'll go, where is Isaiah again? There it is. I don't know why it doesn't spell out Isaiah, but there it is. And then it starts out the first chapter, it'll list all the individual verses, and then it will just go by chapter after that, Isaiah chapter two and three. So we're going to go all the way down to Isaiah chapter 40, and it'll fill that in and just automatically take you to 40 verse one. So if you click on it again, the exact same bar, now, instead of having all the individual verses for chapter one, it has all the individual verses for chapter 40. And so we can go, so we're in chapter 40, Isaiah chapter 40, and I go all the way down here to verse 31, and then it pulls that up. Right now, we're just in the Bible, so it'll show that particular verse in a bunch of different versions, which that alone is helpful. You can use a number of different apps or websites or anything to do that but this one's helpful. So it lists a bunch of different versions. And sometimes that's enough. Just reading it in a few different versions helps. Just sometimes a single different verb is helpful, but I like to use the interlinear. So I click on this right here, interlin. And now it pulls it up. It can also click here and it'll take the whole chapter, but I just have this particular verse pulled up. In the Old Testament, it's different than the New Testament. Old Testament is Hebrew, New is Greek mostly. And so it's writing, this is Hebrew and it's writing it backwards basically. So each little chunk is written forward, but overall it's backwards. So if you read it from the left to right, like we normally would, it wouldn't make any sense. But if you read the chunks from right to left, it does. So it says, but those who wait on, we go to Yahweh, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So this is first, you can see the 31 there. And this is what I wanted to look at because we were talking about this today, those who wait on the Lord. First, we know this is Old Covenant, not New Covenant. We are not waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. We're not waiting for Pentecost. We are already Holy Spirit filled. If you're a Holy Spirit filled believer, um, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Savior. So we're not waiting in the same way. We know that the only time they say wait in that way, 
in the New Testament is to wait for the Holy Spirit to come at Pentecost, and we're past that date. And so it always just made me wonder, okay, what, maybe there's more to this word, or maybe it's just old covenant. But if we look, so when we go to this, but those who wait on the Lord, or well, it just says, but those who wait on, we've got a few different things. If you go to this top number here, it's the number in the strongest concordance. So you can do this in a book. You can do this. Um, there's all sorts of books and there's newer concordances out there too, but this is free. <laughs> So we know the definition is to wait for the verb. But when we look down at a couple of concordances, the verb wait for probably originally twist, stretch, then of tension, of enduring, waiting, be strong, strength, strand of rope, endure, remain, await, threads, spiders, threads. So this is adding a little more depth for me. I think, am I waiting passively? Doesn't really fit with new covenant, but if we look, am I part of a strand of a rope? Am I like a spider web? We think of how, I mean, they're, they're sticky, they're interwoven. I want to be interwoven and sticking like God. And I've looked at this before. I I'm not a Hebrew scholar. I don't know what all these different words mean. I don't know how to pronounce them, but I can still use this. And when we look down, wait or eagerly work, um, eagerly look for, or I guess it says, or look eagerly for, it'll also show other places that they've used this word. So waiting can mean so much more depth than what we might think, like just sit patiently and wait. If you're waiting, knowing something is gonna come true, it makes me think of the, like if you pray for rain, prepare your fields. You're actually doing something. You might be waiting then for the rain, but you're not just sitting back and waiting. You're actually actively working. And so when I go down to Strong's is usually somewhere, sometimes it's at the top. I don't know their reasoning for ordering sometimes theirs is in here as well sometimes not it's different on each word and in different sections of the bible i don't know their reasoning but here we have strongs and it says gather together look patiently tarry wait for on the pond and the primitive root to bind together perhaps by twisting and it just that twisting together, binding together as if a rope. We are doing that with the Lord, right? We are waiting on the Lord or binding together, twisting together with the Lord. Yeah. That other look eagerly for the Lord. We're, it's it's not that we're trying to change the meaning, it's that we're trying to understand the depth of a very different language than ours, and it can really help with that. So there are so many different things you can click on, all the blue things you can click on and see this verse in different, in Hebrew or in different versions of English Bibles. You can click on the different verses that they reference and go straight to those. So there's there's so much. You can just go straight to different concordances. And you can just come right back up here and change verses. So I know we did not go to Job 17, 13. What I found is if I just click back on my phone or my tablet, it'll go back to the verse. I'm assuming it switches that top thing because maybe that's the first place in the Bible that that exact word is used with this reference in Strong's Concordance. So I just back on whatever device I'm on, left or right swipe, and it goes back to where I was, Isaiah 40, 31. And again, I can click and see the whole chapter. That's not the case, I don't think, on the phone. But um, so that is how... I use it and um, I think I can also 
I'm just gonna stop share. And like I said, I'm sure there is so much more to this. And sometimes I've played around with more, but mostly I just go through here, pick a word I want more information on and click on this top blue thing with the numbers and find that. So I'm just gonna stop that share. And I'm gonna go to, don't know that you can see that, okay. So I don't think we're going to do the phone. I thought that would work, but it is not going to. So um, we go, if you go to the Bible Hub app on your phone or a tablet or some device, the bottom right corner, there's a button that says interlinear. Once you've clicked on that, it will show that same little white bar at the top. And you can click on the book and the chapter and the verse. Just know that when you click on them on the phone, it can take a minute to load. So if I click on the book and then go right and try to click on the chapter, if it hasn't already loaded the book, it'll automatically go back to John 3.16 because that's what it's set at. So um, just give it a moment, let it load the book, and then go to the chapter, let it load the chapter, and then you can go to the verse. It doesn't take long, but if you rush it, you'll never get to the chapter and verse that you're trying to. I know that from experience. So anyway, I'm sorry it doesn't work to show you on the phone, but um, it, it does work the same and it actually does look the same once you get into the interlinear part. It looks identical, just much smaller. So I hope that helps and uh, just happy searching. Bye.